Let's take a look at doing a thermal analysis using Creo Simulation Live in Creo Parametric 6.0. And I've pulled up an old example from the Mechanica training classes from Wildfire 3.0 and earlier because I'm not that good at thermal. Let's take a look at materials. So for example, here we have a PCB material assigned to a part. And on the thermal tab, you can choose your symmetry. For Creo Simulation Live, it currently supports isotropic uh, thermal properties. And you need to specify your specific heat capacity and your thermal conductivity. And like all other properties, you have a drop down list that you can use to change to the set of units that you have the properties for. Let's cancel out of here. All the different components in this assembly have materials assigned. Let's enter live simulation. And it's finished loading up the libraries. Now, this particular assembly had a Creo Simulate or Mechanica analysis already associated with it. That's why it automatically defaulted to thermal. And it's got a boundary condition already in here. I can't delete it, I su suspect, because it came over from Creo Simulate. And if I don't want to use this particular thermal boundary condition, I can create a new thermal analysis. I'll go to the Add Simulation button and then click the button to create the new thermal. Here I have Thermal 2 and it's got a little green diamond next to it indicating that it is the active analysis. And since I activated that one, if I wanted to, I could delete the other thermal analysis. But let's leave it inside of here. Now let's define some different conditions in the model. And I'll start off with some different heat loads. If I click on the heat flow, I can select different surfaces. You can change the name of the load that you are defining and also change the color that it's going to be displayed in. And let's choose the top surfaces of some of these big chips over here. And for the heat flow, we could define it in a bunch of different units. And I'm going to say that, let's use watts. And for those two big components, let's say that we have a heat flow of one watt coming from them. That's good. Let's click the OK button. And you can see the icon displaying it on top of the model in the graphics area. Let's do a second one on top of the smaller chips. And I'm holding down the control key. And for this, these ones, we're going to have a higher heat load. And I can change the units to watts and enter in the value of 2. Let's click the OK button. And for the third load that I'm going to apply, it's going to be on the bottom surface of a chip die part. And to make it easier to see, let's select a bunch of these different components and hide them. Just will make it easier for me to click on the underside of this particular part. Let's click Heat Flow again. And I'm going to tap the right mouse button to query select to the bottom surface. And we're going to say that this one is really hot. It's generating 10 watts. And then click OK. So those are good for the various different heat loads. Uh, we have some bolts that are going to go through these. And we're going to use those to establish a prescribed temperature. And for that, we'll go to the boundary conditions group and then click the temperature command. Let's zoom in and select one half of the cylindrical surface. It'll automatically grab the other one and hold down the control key. Get those two surfaces there. Control again. And the fourth hole. Let's choose to use, let's use 15 degrees Celsius just so that we can get a nice big gradient in the temperatures. And the last things that I'm going to define in here are some convection coefficients. So let's choose to create convection boundary condition. And again, we can choose for our different references. We can select these different surfaces. And for these big chips, we're going to use a convection coefficient of 0.01. And let's say that it's really hot inside of there. We got some warm air flowing over there. Let's use a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. And click the OK button. For the next convection coefficient, let's select 
the top surface of the smaller chips. And let's use a higher value of the convection coefficient. And again, same air temperature of 40 degrees. Oops, that's 400. That would be way too high. And lastly, we do have a uh, component over here, this one for the heat sink, and we're going to define a convection coefficient for that one as well. Let's click convection and let's pick a few of the different surfaces in here. I'm going to pick a bunch of them. And let's just get a couple more. So that is good. Let's use a higher convection coefficient point. Oops. Yeah, 0.04, that is good. And bulk temperature again, we're going to say it's going to be 40 degrees Celsius. And click the OK button. So now you can see in this thermal analysis, if I expand it, we've got our constraints, including the boundary condition, prescribed temperature, and convection coefficients. And then we have our different heat flows defined inside of here. Let's click on the simulate button and I before I click on the simulate button I want to point out another big advance in Creo Parametric 6.0 is that I'm performing these analyses on assemblies not just individual parts and we'll see how fast this takes to run hit the simulate button and it says you've started it and there it goes it's calculating and we can see that our peak temperature looks like it's about 73 degrees and the lowest temperature is 15 degrees where we have our prescribed temperatures at the location where those bolts are. Let's take a look at some of the uh, different options that we have in here for the results. I will click on result options and you can check the box to show the minimum and the maximum. And not a big surprise where we had that big 10 watts of heat being generated on the bottom of that component. That's where we are seeing the maximum and the minimum is located where we have our prescribed temperatures. Let's turn off the display of our different constraints and loads. Looks like there are a few convection coefficients still being displayed. I'm not sure why that is. And for the result types, you can display either temperature or the heat flux. That is good for this dialog box. Let's take a look at the simulation report. And this gives us the different information. You can hyperlink down to where we have the model data, analysis data, boundary conditions, ambient conditions, loads, and our current results for the maximum and the minimum. And you have the save button in this dialog box where you could save this information out as a file. So again, pretty neat stuff that we have here with doing steady state thermal analyses in real time in a design model. So please leave a comment to let me know if real time simulation as you're designing is something that is worthwhile to you. And what I mean by that real time simulation is that if we make any changes to the model, then these are going to update in real time. Let's take a look at doing one of those changes. So for example, let's go to this PCB component and we can edit materials. Let's go to our grant to design library and let's say that, hey, we're going to choose to make this out of, you know, let's say that instead this is a medium carbon steel. Right click and choose assign. Yes, we're going to change what material is in here. Click the OK button and it recalculates. Now we see that our maximum temperature is only 63 degrees. So as we make changes to the different components, whether it's their geometry or the material properties, everything updates immediately. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.